Anton Chekhov's play comes to the screen with Corey Stoll, Elizabeth Moss, Sir Sharonin, and Annette Benning. Sony Pictures Classics. First things first, I've never seen a stage production of The Seagull, Anton Chekhov's famous play. I've never read it. And I didn't see the 1968 film directed by Sidney Lumet. But I've seen Michael Myers' new film version, and thanks to its terrific cast, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I just can't compare it to anything else. Yes, like most filmed plays, it's very chatty. But when those doing the chatting include Elizabeth Moss, Saoirse Ronan, Corey Stoland, most especially, Annette Benning, and the words they're using belong to Chekhov, that's a pretty winning combination. The film takes place at the summer mansion of Soren, Brian Dennehy, deathly ill, sort of, he hangs around for an awfully long time. Visitors include his sister, Arena, Benning, an actress whose greatest role clearly is herself. She brings along Boris Trigorin, Stoll, a famous author who is also her lover, as well as her son, Constantine, Billy Howell, a struggling writer jealous of Boris on pretty much all possible fronts. Constantine loves Nina, Ronan, she and Howell also play a couple in On Chesil Beach, an actress who likes him okay, but really has eyes for Boris. Masha. Moss, desperately loves Constantine, who has no use for her. To round out the romantic dysfunction, Masha isn't interested in Mikhail, Michael Zegan, who loves her. Got all that? Don't worry, eventually all of them, and more, will interact with each other, mostly in withering exchanges. Remember Benning's Ice Queen character in American Beauty, for which she won an Oscar? She could be Irina's nicer sister. Her self-interest, even at the expense of her own son, is breathtaking. Benning is terrific, there's a bit where she is dressing her son's wound, long story, and tells him how nicely it's healing, all with a horrified look on her face. I laughed out loud. There's plenty of humor, in fact. These are selfish people with selfish motives, at least the ones with any sort of self-awareness. That's always funny, up to a point. Moss is also really good, boozing away her troubles, dressed in black. I'm in mourning. For my life, when Boris gives her a sideways glance when she takes a pull off of her flask, she just shrugs and says, what's the big deal? Plenty of women drink these days. Sure. Just maybe not at breakfast. There's not a bad performance here. Stoll is much better than I've seen him before, capturing the ego of a literary superstar. His scribbled line in his notebook while chatting and flirting with Nina is the most quietly devastating thing in the film, but also the roguish charm. He's addicted to writing, he tells anyone who will listen, no one really bothers to ask. And he's dying to tell you about it. There isn't a lot more to the story than the romantic machinations. But really, is there much more to any stories? Isn't that the source of so much drama? And there is plenty of drama, melodrama, too, to go around. But there's also great sadness. Meyer, or perhaps Chekhov, again, I'm ignorant as to the source material, doesn't always get the balance exactly right. Some of the set pieces don't really flow together, at times you feel like you're watching bits and pieces of two or three different films. Happily, they're all pretty good ones. Cast, Annette Bening, Saoirse Ronan, Corey Stoll, Elizabeth Moss. Rating, PG-13 for some mature thematic elements, a scene of violence, drug use and partial nudity. Note, at Harkins Camel View at Fashion Square. <laughs>